Hey there, hopefully you enjoyed a quick little breather there. Let's resume our conversation in segment two with uh, talking about common diseases of cattle. So let's, uh, let's get back in here and talk about scours, which of course can be really fatal in young calves. And so something that we have to really be aware of, it's caused by a number of different things. And of course, E. coli is very, very prominent and you'll see E. coli as a cause of a lot of different things in, in cattle. But when we talk about calves from one to three days of age, if they develop scours, they've mostly, most likely got an infection triggered by E. coli. If you get between days five and 15, it's probably a rota virus or coronavirus driven infection causing scours. But oftentimes it'll be associated also with stress or just simple poor nutrition or incorrect feeding um, operations. So there's a number of different things that can cause scours, but clearly, You'll have extreme diarrhea, weight loss, listlessness, um, high fevers, maybe some potential respiratory outbreak that goes with it. But ways to prevent it is just uh, simply a good nutritional program. Vaccinate your cows and your calves. Uh, sanitation of your all of your equipment, your buckets, your bottles, everything. And then optimal colostrum feeding levels with uh, whenever baby calves are brand new. That will help uh, provide you a little passive immune transfer. Coccidiosis is next to another calf disease, and this one is triggered actually by a protozoan type parasite um, that is, you know, influences kind of lower in the digestive tract in the large intestine typically, uh, oftentimes proliferates after a period of stress, uh, again, feed changes, maybe weather, uh, shipping, uh, things of that nature can trigger kind of a proliferation of the parasite of the protozoa, and it will, it will then cause therefore disease. It usually doesn't happen. This one gets past that normal scours time frame. And so somewhere in that two to three weeks after birth, you might see blood streak diarrhea. That's one of the signature symptoms of coxy. Um, it may also be associated with uh, pneumonia. Uh, they can really develop a pretty severe infection if it uh, lingers for four to six days. Um, they'll have really, really smelly, weird smelly diarrhea of a really kind of gray consistency. They may even lose hair around their around their nose and around their tail head and have a really rough hair coat like they've been licking it the whole time. Prevention, again, clean water, clean feed. Uh, any affected animal, make sure that you quarantine them and then clean the facility or structure that they're in very clearly. If you can expose your calf huts to the sun, that helps break the cycle, so to speak. And then feed an anaphore like, uh, Ampro, uh, or like Bobotec, which is lasalicid, decoquinate, or decox, and then treatment is typically amprolium uh, type, type crumbles or a medicant in the water that you, that you can offer to help uh, treat coccidiosis. Salmonella is next, and there's two typical forms, either genital or gastrointestinal, and we'll primarily focus on the gastrointestinal, but there's like a thousand plus species uh, of bacteria that can cause salmonella outbreak. Again, this will typically occur in older cows, and you'll have high fevers for short periods of time, very profuse diarrhea, they'll be off feed, so lose their appetite, they can abort. Um, these are oftentimes associated with sanitation type problems and um, can be spread actually by birds. Uh, you have high bird populations sometimes because there's lots of available feed for them uh, on beef cattle operations or dairy cattle operations. And as birds are, you know, sitting around, they also defecate onto the feed and that helps spread uh, spread salmonella. Treatment is oftentimes widespread antibiotic therapy and be warned, this is a zoonotic disease. So don't mess around with it yourself because you can contract it if it's going through your cows. Cystic ovarian disease, as we transition and talk about something in the reproductive nature, is a really high cause for infertility in beef and dairy cattle. Uh, oftentimes it's going to be associated with some other problem, a routine placenta, a milk fever, a low body condition score, which is BCS signified here on the slide. And again, these are either follicular or luteal cysts. And I believe that we talked about these as well in swine, so I won't go into any more detail than that. Uh, but a follicle that fails to release an egg or a uh, corpus luteum that doesn't regress appropriately, then we've got a hormonal imbalance that... Uh, causes animals to either be completely anestrous or exhibit nymphomania. 
typically to treat this thing, we're going to go with hormone therapy of some kind and consult with your veterinarian which, which hormone would be appropriate and at what level to administer it. Sticking with some of our reproductive tract problems, next is retained fetal membranes. And this is diagnosed after we have uh, a cow that's gone through calving and the placenta is not expelled within uh, 12 hours. So if they hang on to it for some particular reason, uh, then we diagnose it as retained fetal membranes or retained placenta. Uh, it's associated with a lot of different things. Uh, poor nutrition, uh, milk fever, abortions, dystocia, and a number of other things, but those are the main four characters that are involved in this one. Prevent it by really good uh, pre-calving nutritional programs and keeping your animals in proper body condition score. You don't want them too heavy and you certainly don't want them too thin because that will, both of those things will trigger potentially retained placentas. Treat it by oxytocin. That's a hormone that can help uh, loosen the connections in the uterus between the caruncles and the cotyledons and help expel that placenta out of there. You may go with antibiotics because of course now we have a wick for bacteria to invade the vagina and the uterus and can cause a, a nitritis that we'll talk about subsequently here. When cows calve, if you can get them to drink about 10 gallon of warm water, that will help hydrate them right away and that helps actually uh, prevent prevent uh, retained placentas. And then other effects, and of course they're going to be lower milk production, so if they're nursing a calf, that calf is going to get uh, malnutrition pretty quickly. Uh, they're not going to eat as much, they potentially have a fever, they might uh, have lower conception reproductive efficiency rates later on, and then displaced albumasin could result from this, and we'll talk about that disease as well. Leptospirosis, again a similar type uh, pest that pathogen than we've talked about with swine. Again, also related in cattle with abortions and no milk production. And sometimes you may see no symptoms at all. They're just the uh, quiet carriers of it. But usually, again, that seven to 10 day incubation time, treatments through antibiotics, blood transfusion, transfusions, or simple culling. Motoring through this section here, let's talk quickly about pyometra. So this one is closely tied to retained fetal membranes, retained placenta. Uh, whenever cows have trouble with those kind of things, sometimes we can have some lingering bacteria that as, the, as we get over the retained placenta, they keep some of that bacteria in the uterine tract and causes a lot of pus accumulation and will oftentimes cause them to be anesterous. They won't come into heat. So treatment of this one, we got to get that pus siphoned off of there somehow. Uh, usually hormone therapy is a great way to go about that. You could go actually with intrauterine antibiotics, which means we're uh, basically um, injecting antibiotics right up into the uterus to help clean that area out. And you probably are going to give systemic antibiotics as well. Pyometra may follow not only retained placenta, but also bovine metritis. Metritis is an inflammation or infection of the uterus. And it's often caused by unsanitary calving conditions, so a dirty calving area, whether it's muddy out in the pasture or your calving pens in your barn are just way too dirty. Uh, might be associated, with, again, with that retained placenta. Poor artificial insemination technique may also cause it. And it's typically signified by really putrid smelling discharge from the, uh, from the vagina. Um, and oftentimes that, that animal will be carrying a, a fairly substantial fever. So prevent this with just simple good sanitary technique. If you're having to assist a cow in calving, you know, wear breeding gloves, make sure and clean your equipment so it's very clean all the time, uh, whether you're using calf pulling chains or the nylon strap uh, kind of, of uh, calf pulling assisters, uh, keep those things clean. Careful treatment, if we have routine placentas or uterine tears of any kind, again, sanitary conditions and very careful treatment. This one is treated typically by hormone therapy in addition to antibiotics. You're going to go with both and probably at, at the substantial levels of antibiotics. This one will knock them off for a good period of time if you don't uh, not active in treating them. So that one is going to conclude. Um, it's a wrap for section two. I've got a typo here. But get yourself ready for, for the third segment here, and we'll continue our discussion with uh, common cattle diseases. Thank you for listening.